assalamu alaikum i'm irfan hussain and um, here i am with a new topic of um, comparative literature that is french school of comparative literature when we study uh, comparative literature as a discipline we come across two famous schools of comparative literature and they are French School of Comparative Literature and American School of Comparative Literature. Our today's talk will be about French School of Comparative Literature because it came first and in its reaction there came American School of Comparative Literature. What are the main theses of um, French School of Comparative Literature? These are to study while comparing two works or two authors they study influence reception borrowing and imitation we can understand it that uh, when influence between two works is studied it is studied in comparison that which author influenced the which one and uh, in reception we study who received what and borrowing what was borrowed and in imitation what has been imitated we will see these points one by one along with some other points the first is influence that propagates uh, what influences a particular work of art at first it was cause and effect that was taken by paul van turen that um, that was a cause and effect relation that uh, if one piece of literature came uh, on the surface and it caused to stir other writers and they wrote under that influence that is the cause of and effect relation later in the works of legos katona the emphasis is on the study of sources now it was seen uh, what were the sources of uh, what are the sources of some particular work for example it is uh, um, said about shakespeare that uh, uh, shakespeare took his stories most uh, mostly from plutarch's stories so plutarch was the source of uh, shakespearean plays and there may be in your new works uh, for example if not new but victorian novel you see that that was um, charles dickens novel tale of two cities although it was not uh, taken from but it was inspired from the influence of great french master albert duma and particularly uh, dickens was influenced by his novel count of monte cristo so that that was influence and that is how influence works on other writers and it uh, this study shifts to originality what is original and what has been derived from that original source another french writer e chevro uh, see i am reading it in uh, the french pronunciation of that of that name e chevro uh, that um, who what what he did on the other hand focuses mainly on influence studies and its aspects like the influence of x knowledge of x on the a neutral level see uh, for example one reader is uh, studying starting st uh, studying something on neutral level that he hasn't and one word when we say neutral level it means objectively objectively and when he reads some text or some author objectively what kind of influence he gets or what kind of the influence that writer or the text exercises on the reader so keep it in mind that here the emphasis is on the author or is on the text not on the reader what that text what that author exercise that influence on the reader's mind that was studied by e shaw uh, in in the context of comparative literature now there are two uh, stakeholders one is the emitter 
who is uh, emitting influence who is exercising influence and other is the recipient who is receiving the uh, influence what is important on the part of uh, emitter critics say that it is a fortune repetition diffusion and radiation these are the elements that are important on the part of the emitter he, if he is having a strong reputation he is having a good fortune and um, he is having a diffusion that his work has been spread and uh, popular among the readers club or the people who like to read and write something and so is radiation on the level of the receptor uh, he focuses on reaction critique opinion reading and orientation see how reader feels about something when he reads that is his reaction what his mind and how does his mind analyze something that is his great uh, critical approach and how after analysis he forms his opinion he forms his thought that is his opinion then how does he read and what is his own orientation what is his own ex exposure all the readers are not equal we can understand things if we have better exposure to the reading for example if i am reading a novel uh, anna krenin of dear tolstoy i can understand it better if i have some exposure to russian culture to russian history the connection of between french and russian people the their, their aristocratic culture the uh, culture of soldiers their cultures of princes and princesses so if i understand these things i can better understand uh, the text so on the level of receptor there are few things that are important to receive something from some authentic source in french school uh, the term influence has been gradually replaced by reception i just focused that the focus is only on the writer on the author but here the focus is on the reader how does reader perceive something it is not about the author or the writer who exercises influence on the reader but it is on the receptor that how he gets that influence as i just told you that readers are not always equal and they always have different approaches different sets of minds different cultures different contexts so they receive some text according to their own context now translation in comparative literature translation is a very important and uh, as we all know that uh, when some literature is um, in its uh, weak on its weak state then the literature has to get support from translation from other languages and also uh, it is um, uh, about media adaptation it is also influence it's also reception that uh, how the works are adopted in media you can see the example of romeo and juliet uh, harry potter and uh, even pakistani writer babsi sidwa she her works has uh, been adopted in uh, hollywood and indian movies our writer mohsin hamid his works have been adopted in movies that is also a form of um, uh, comparison as uh, we have discussed in our earlier discussions that comparison is not between only the written literature but it is also uh, it can be not only compared with drama adaptation movie adaptation but also with other genres of literature and other forms of art as well imitation uh, that how one writer does imitate other it is comparison how uh, is there if, if, if ibsen is a harbinger of feminism and did bernard shaw imitate him 
imitate him or if there is any other writer that tries to imitate him if Keats imitated Milton or Shakespeare because he was influenced by them this is all studies in comparative literature Borrowing and lending, we know that writers uh, do lend to other writers that uh, uh, the writers that come after the great legends, they definitely borrow from the, their predecessors. And this is how uh, the predecessors lend something to their successors. And when we study, when we compare a piece of literature with other piece of literature or we compare one author with another, another author, we see that how much borrowing and lending has been done between them. One hallmark of French uh, approach of compared, studying comparative literature, that is a Eurocentric approach. They consider themselves superior and they don't uh, think it, they don't take it uh, as somewhat legitimate that uh, the European literature could be compared with non-European literature. Even they are strict sometimes to their own nation, to the French literature. They, they think that French literature cannot be compared with the literature of other nations. That is a strict nationalism. That is uh, the most striking point of French school of comparative literature. And we will see how then uh, counter it. it was countered by American school of literature. As I told you that it was Eurocentric and sometimes it was even French-centric. Uh, they consider Europe superior to others and they consider that European literature cannot be compared with other literature. So this is all about French literature, French uh, School of Comparative Literature. I hope that you would have understood and if you have any questions, you can ask me. Thank you very much. Stay home, stay blessed. God bless you.